Hello and welcome back to writing FreeDOS programs in C. So up until now we've learned about the structure of a C program, we learned about variables, and we learned about different types of flow control using uh, if and if else and switch statements. We've also learned about different types of loops. But there's another very powerful feature in C and that's functions. Functions allow you to separate part of your functionality uh, so you can make larger problems uh, easier to solve by breaking them down into parts. And so that's what we're going to learn about today, is how to write our own functions. Now, if you remember, we've actually been doing uh, uh, our own functions all along. We've been doing the main function. The main function is uh, the actual program itself. Uh, and so uh, as we write our own functions, you'll see a lot of similarity to that. Now, uh, I want to uh, start with that uh, even uh, uh, program that we've written before. So let's go back into that real quick, even.c. Uh, and if you remember this uh, function or this program, uh, it looped and it read a number and then it would tell me if it was even or odd and it would quit if I entered in a, a zero. Uh, so these comments are very helpful as we come back to our program later to remind us what the program is supposed to do. Uh, here's our loop. Uh, so it's doing a do loop. And it's not doing the evaluation until the end, and that way we're actually able to uh, uh, run this all the time. Uh, and uh, it scans in a number, and then it used a switch uh, uh, block to actually do different things if it was uh, zero or not zero, for, and the, 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 uh, the modulo of uh, the number being uh, uh, zero or non-zero. That really told me if it was even or not. Uh, I want to actually uh, make this an if block again. So let's let's get rid of uh, some, some code here and we'll make this into an if block. Uh, we did that before, but I just want to turn that back in there. So if uh, the number modulo 2 is equal to 0, right? So that means uh, 2 divided by 2 is uh, 1 with a remainder of 0. So the modulo is 0 in that case. Uh, then that would mean that the, uh, the number is even. Otherwise, um, the number is odd. And so I'm just doing a very simple if else in this case. Uh, so let's go ahead and compile it just to remind ourselves that this is actually working. Uh, save and quit. Uh, and i16gcc, we're going to turn on all warnings. Uh, we're going to output to even.exe. And we're going to compile even.c. And if I don't have any uh, errors in my program, I can go ahead and, and uh, run. Uh, even. So let's enter in some numbers. Uh, 1 should be an odd number, 2 should be even, 3 should be odd, 4 should be even, 11 should be odd, 22 should be even, 33 should be odd. You get the point, right? It's working. Uh, 0, which is also an even number. So uh, here we go and uh, uh, let's, let's modify this, this uh, program to actually use a function. So let's go into our uh, even and let's modify this to use a function. So I'm going to do this before my main function. I'll, in a little bit, I'll show you about how you would uh, have a function defined after main. Uh, but for right now, I'll put it ahead of main. So I want to. How do we define our main function? Well, we we told it, told the compiler what type of of function it was. In this case, it was an integer function. Main's always an integer function. Uh, we gave it the name of the function main, and then um, any parameters that you want to pass to it. Are going to be inside these parentheses. Well, we haven't gotten to that point yet in uh, our programming examples where we actually are able to, to read the command line, which would actually populate that uh, parentheses, but uh, uh, so we've, we've been using that as empty. And then inside uh, our, the function itself, we are, we're defining the contents of the function uh, inside these curly braces. That's the same way that we're going to define our own function up above. Uh, in this case, I want to have an integer function. Uh, and I want to call this uh, is even. And um, uh, is even is going to take a number. And it's going to take a number, I'll just call it, uh, let's call it i. Um, I'm being very bad at naming my, my uh, variables here. Now, what kind of a variable is i? Uh, i is an integer. I want to be uh, running against integers. So, um, that's how I'm going to define that there is int i. And uh, now I've got my 
uh, curly braces to define where my function begins and ends, and inside that I'm going to actually write my function. All right, so let's put in a little comment in here first, just to always remind ourselves what it is our function does. Uh, this function uh, will test uh, if uh, the number uh, is even, which means it's divisible by two. Um, and uh, if it is, it will uh, return a true value, right? Uh, otherwise, uh, return a false, right? False value. And you remember when we were uh, doing our tests before, uh, we did tests um, inside the, you know, for like an if statement or a while statement inside these parentheses. Uh, and so um, I modulo 2 is equal to 0. That's a test right there. That's our test. Uh, inside these parentheses, I modulo 2 is it equal to zero? Uh, and that returns uh, when you're using it in an if statement or you're using it in a while statement, uh, that's going to return a true value or a false value, uh, which is what we want to return. We want to return true or false. So we want to tell uh, the program that called this function um, true or false, and so we're just going to use return. Uh, and that's all we need to write uh, for this function. Uh, is we're going to return uh, the truth value of is i modulo 2 equal to 0. Because 1 divided by 2 is 0 with the remainder of 1, so that's not true. Um, 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1 with a remainder of 0. So, yep, 0 equals 0, and that will be uh, will be true. So uh, we are returning true and false values here. And so then down here, uh, I want to, uh, instead of doing this test right here, I can actually do a function call. Here, I'll put some spaces around it so we can see it. Is even that number. And that's how we do a function call. We've called the function uh, is even. And up here, uh, is even. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, this kind of reads to me as i7, <laughs> so you can actually use underscore. Underscore is another valid uh, character that you can use in uh, variable names uh, and also function names. All the uh, the, the, the rules for uh, writing a, a variable name apply to function names, so I'm going to use uh, the underscore. So now it reads to me as is even. So why am I doing this? You know, I, I, I'm, this is a very short uh, function, uh, but it's helpful because it allows me to read my code that much easier. So here, uh, rather than doing some sort of uh, test, I'm actually saying if the number is even, then do this statement. Otherwise, do that statement. So it's a little bit more readable. Uh, with a function than with not. So let's go ahead and save that. Oh, just so we know it's that we're actually inside that function, let's actually print a, uh, a little statement here. Um, just to remind ourselves here, we'll put it up here. Um, we'll just do a put s. Uh, and we'll just say uh, uh, is even. Right? That's, a, that's our reminder to ourselves that we're actually in the function is even. Why am I printing that? This is debugging. It's just so that we all know that actually I'm, I'm, I've called the is even function debugging, right? That's my note. Go ahead and save and quit. And now we're going to recompile our function or recompile our program. Uh, and if I don't have any errors, it'll just come right back. And now we can run even. Uh, let's go ahead and enter some numbers. So again, uh, one should be an odd number. And it is. And we know because of our debugging output that we actually did call the is even function. Uh, two should be even. And it's called the is even function and it's returned even. Three, 11, 22, 33, 55, 56. Right, you get the point. Uh, we're definitely calling our function and it's correctly telling us if our value is odd or even. 
Uh, zero is how we exit, so we'll go ahead and enter that. That's an even number, and there we are. Now, uh, I defined my, my function above main. Uh, let's go back into there, uh, even.c. Um, it's common. You'll find a lot of programmers will actually put their function definitions uh, or their functions after um, uh, after the main function. And so if I go down here to the end, paste. Uh, now I've defined my function after the main function. Now if I compile this, let's go ahead and compile this. Uh, we'll actually see we're going to get a warning. Save and quit. Go ahead and compile. Why am I getting a warning? Because uh, the compiler hasn't seen that function yet. It doesn't know what it is, and yet I've tried to use it in my program. So the compiler uh, is is saying, "Hey, uh, there's a there's something here called is even. I think it's a uh, a function. Uh, just FYI, you're 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 calling a function here." Um, so I didn't actually, uh, if, you, if you put the function ahead of the, the main function, that means that basically if you're putting all your functions in order of the way that you would uh, normally call them or that they would show up in the, in the uh, code listing, uh, then you won't get that error. Good practice though is, uh, especially if you're going to put your main function first and other stuff below it, uh, you want to give what's called a function declaration. Uh, so what did I have down below? Let's just dump down to the bottom. Uh, so here I had uh, int is even uh, and then int i. Let's go ahead and copy that. And we'll go back up to the top. And now we'll go ahead and paste that in. I can put this on one line, and I typically do. Now when we're doing this as a function definition, I want to put a semicolon at the end. Uh, because that, that's the same as saying right, int num, uh, where I had the variable type and then the variable itself, and then a semicolon at the end because that was the end of my statement. Well, up here I'm defining a function the same way. What type of function is it? What's the name of my function? What arguments does the function take? Semicolon at the end. That's a function definition if you're going to have the function show up after where you're going to be calling it in the code. And it's generally good practice to have some kind of function definition. You'll see that a lot in programs. Let's go ahead and save and quit. We'll recompile with all warnings turned on. I shouldn't get any warnings at this point because I've defined my function. And now if I run even, um, one, two, three, four, right? You can see that I'm getting uh, the correct values for odd and even. So functions are a great way uh, to make your code simpler and easier. You're going to see functions everywhere in C. Uh, functions, as I said earlier, uh, they make it easier, uh, they make it possible, rather, to, to make difficult problems easier by tackling that big problem uh, into smaller chunks that you can tackle more easily. So you can call a function anywhere in your program uh, even inside other functions. And I encourage you to look at the standard C library, uh, and that includes all the different functions that, um, uh, that C provides, uh, and you can call any of those functions. And I've used some of those uh, here. I've used put s, print f, scan f. Those are all functions uh, that are from the standard C library. Another neat thing about C is that a function can call itself. And you need to be very careful about that. A, uh, a function that calls itself is called a recursive function, and they're not useful everywhere. In fact, I would argue sometimes uh, where people use a recursive function, they really should have found some other way to do it. But sometimes recursive functions are the easiest way to do it. Um, and uh, one place that they show up is mathematics. Now there's a thing called the Fibonacci sequence, uh, which I'm going to go ahead and do. It's a very classic demonstration of a uh, uh, of a uh, recursive function, a, a function that calls itself. So let's go ahead and write that. Uh, again, the standard way that we'd write a program is include uh, standard io.h. Here's our main function. Uh, and before that, we're going to go ahead and just uh, define our function. So, what kind of function do I need to do? This is a Fibonacci. Uh, Fibonacci only works on integers, so I need to make an integer function. Uh, 
Uh, I don't want to keep typing Fibonacci all the time because that's long, so I'll just type fib. That's the name of my function. Uh, and uh, what's it going to take as an argument? Well, the Fibonacci sequence uh, is going to take just a single number for an argument, which is basically uh, what's the value of that Fibonacci uh, number, that, that position in the, in the list. So uh, in this case, it's going to be uh, an integer of i. And there's the rest of my function. So let's remind ourselves, if you haven't, if you haven't seen the Fibonacci sequence before, let's actually tell you what the Fibonacci sequence is. The Fibonacci uh, sequence. Uh, the, uh, uh, it's defined this way. The Fibonacci uh, of a number, uh, any number, let's say n, is going to be equal to the Fibonacci of the two numbers that came before it. So n minus 1 plus the uh, Fibonacci of n minus 2. Uh, I don't like typing Fibonacci all the time, and in case, and anyway, I've got my, my function itself is called fib, so I'm going to go ahead and do this as fib, which is much easier to spell and less likely to get that wrong. So uh, here I have the, the definition of the Fibonacci. Uh, any, any number is going to be uh, the fib of n is the sum of the two numbers that came before it, fib of n minus 1 plus the fib of n minus 2. So I've, I've defined how my function can take one step by breaking it down into two parts, uh, but where will it end? So if I gave it a Fibonacci of any number, how does it know to stop? Well, uh, there's actually some endpoints for Fibonacci uh, that are actually defined. The Fibonacci of uh, 0 is just 0. And the Fibonacci of 1 is 1. And so uh, what comes after that? Uh, the Fibonacci of uh, 2 is going to be the Fibonacci of 1 plus the Fibonacci of 0 which is 1 plus 0, which is 1. The Fibonacci of 3 is the uh, Fibonacci of 2 plus the uh, Fibonacci of 1. What was the Fibonacci of 2? Right up here, 1. Plus the Fibonacci of 1, just to find up here as 1. So it's 1 plus 1. And that's two. Uh, the uh, Fibonacci of four is going to be just looking at the two lines above it. Two plus one is three. And the Fibonacci of five, again, the two numbers above it, three plus two, three plus two is five. And so on for other numbers, right? The Fibonacci of six is three plus five, things like that. So this is this is the uh, the, the Fibonacci sequence um, by breaking it out by one step, but also at the same time knowing how my function should end. Now, obviously, this is for any n um, that is greater than or equal to. Uh, to zero. So let's go ahead and write my function. So that's just a big comment that reminds me what this is doing. Uh, so how am I going to define this function? Uh, well, I could just write uh, return uh, and then give it a value to return. I could just say, all right, well, do the fib I'll put this in here with some space. I could just say, all right, we'll do the fib of i minus 1 plus the fib of i minus 2. I could just write that. But again, I need to have the, uh, where does the function uh, know how to stop? So um, let's, let's take into account the zero, fib of 0 and the fib of 1. And uh, we could do this a couple different ways. We could do it with an if else, but uh, we can actually just do it as a switch because we're just uh, trying to go off of what the fib 
number was. So we're going to do a switch off of I, which is what came into the program. Um, and uh, I want to have, uh, there's a, a case of uh, the fib of zero, also the case of the fib of one, and then there's all other numbers. So if it's all of the numbers, we know that the, we're going to return the value of fib of i minus 1 plus the fib of i minus 2. And here, uh, the return value for a fib of 0 was 0. Remember, I could have the break statement. I, I said that before, that if you're going to uh, use a, a switch statement, you need to be careful about uh, breaks. But in this case, uh, we're going to return out of the function before it gets to this break statement. So this actually ends up being uh, entirely optional. Uh, so uh, then we could also do a uh, the fib of 1 should return the value of 1. And as a reminder, uh, any other number default is going to return the fib of uh, i minus 1. Oops, I have an extra parenthesis in there. Uh, we have a, a fib of i minus 1 uh, plus the fib of i minus 2. And so that's the end of my uh, Fibonacci function. So let's go ahead and uh, write something down here that will take care of that. So I want to have a couple of variables. I'm going to want to have a variable that uh, I'm going to put a number into. So we're going to do uh, an integer of, uh, oops, an int of n. And uh, we need to calculate the result. So we'll do an int of the result. So let's go ahead and um, start with a um, uh, printing a prompt. So enter a number uh, to start the, uh, the Fibonacci sequence. And uh, it should be greater than or equal to 0. And so that's the prompt we're going we're gonna to give to the user. And let's go ahead and uh, do a scanf on an integer, percent %d, and we're going to put that into the variable n, which you remember needs to have an ampersand put in front of it for scanf. And now let's go ahead and calculate the results is the fib of n. Now uh, I want to test, uh, this was only valid for uh, uh, numbers that are greater than or equal to zero, so let's go ahead and uh, before I do that, I probably should do a test. Uh, if n is greater than or equal to 0, then we're going to calculate the results. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're going to put s um, number uh, plus b greater than or equal to 0. That's how we're going to protect our Fibonacci function. And because I'm a good programmer, at the end of my program, I should return a value back to the operating system. That's return zero. Uh, so what is my program doing? I've defined two variables at the top. Uh, one is n, and the other is result. Both of those are integers. Uh, I printed a prompt and asked for a number. And then if that is a number that Fibonacci can actually compute, uh, it's going to uh, then calculate the result of the Fibonacci of that number. Uh, if it's not a number that uh, Fibonacci can uh, compute, then it's going to just give me an error message. And then up here is my definition of the Fibonacci. Uh, it's an integer function named fib, and it takes one variable, uh, an integer called i. And then down here is where it's defined the value for uh, that Fibonacci sequence. So let's go ahead and run our program. Go ahead and save and quit. 
and uh, i16 GCC. We're going to turn on all warnings. We're going to output this as fib.exe, and we're going to compile the fib.c program. Oops. Um, I have uh, I've said it, but not used it. Oh, <laughs> because I haven't actually printed it out. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, fib.c. Uh, go down to our main function. Uh, so I've calculated it, but haven't actually printed it. So let's go ahead and, and uh, print that. So uh, we're going to do printf um, the fib of that number. Yep, that number is a number. And so I want to say, okay, it was n and the result. There we go. But now we, we've asked for a number, we've calculated the number, uh, the, the Fibonacci of that number, and then we've, we've printed out um, what the result is. And actually, uh, this um, should be in uh, inside my, my if statement. So we'll go ahead and cut that and we'll paste it up here. Okay. Um, because if it was a, an incorrect number, um, we didn't want to print out some weird weird number. Uh, so here we go. Let's go ahead and, and save and quit. Let's go ahead and recompile my program. And I don't have any errors, so that's good. So uh, let's remind ourselves real quickly uh, what we should get. Um, let's go ahead and, and just uh, start a new text file here, right? The fib.txt. So the fib of 1 or the fib of zero should be zero. The fib of one should be one. Those are defined. That's the definition of the Fibonacci sequence. So the fib of two is going to be the sum of the two before that. So it's one plus zero, so it's one. The fib of three should be the two that came before it, one plus one or 2. The fib of 4 is the sum of the two that came before it, so 2 plus 1 equals 3, and then it really starts to take off, right? So the fib of 5 should be the sum of the two before it, 3 plus 2 equals 5, and if I wanted to go that far, the Fibonacci of 6 is the sum of the two that came before it, 5 plus 3, and that's 8. Right? So uh, if I have this uh, set correctly, uh, when I run my program, uh, I should get those values. So let's go ahead and, and uh, I don't save and quit that, I don't really need it, but uh, uh, just so I have it in front of me, we'll go ahead and type uh, fib.txt. Right? That's my reminder. Let's go ahead and run our program and see if we get those numbers. Let's go ahead and start with uh, the defined endpoints, 0 and 1. So what's the fib of 0? It would be 0. There it is. Uh, rerun the program, 1. What's the fib of 1? should be 1. There it is. Uh, the fib of 2 should also be 1. Uh, and the fib of 3 be 2. Go ahead and skip ahead. The Fibonacci of uh, the Fibonacci of 6 would be 8. And there it is. So we know that my function is, is working correctly. Uh, how do we know it's actually calling uh, the fib function every time? Let's go ahead and edit uh, fib.c. And all I'm going to do right up here uh, is I'm going to put uh, a string to the to the user that just says um, fib. This is a debugging statement, just so we know that it's uh, it's not really meant to do anything. It's just reminding us that we're actually in the fib function. Go ahead and save and quit. Uh, let's go ahead and recompile. And uh, reminding ourselves fib.txt, right? So let's go ahead and run uh, fib, and the fib of 
zero, that should be a pretty fast return. It should only call the fib function once because it instantly knows what the fib of zero is. Here it is, it only calls it once. How do I know it called it once? It only printed that fib uh, line once, the fib open and close parenthesis. That's my uh, reminder that it actually entered the, the Fibonacci uh, function. Uh, I should get uh, uh, only one call for the fib of one because again, that's a well-defined number. If I give it the fib of two, now we know the values themselves are correct because we, we tested that before, but you can see at the top of the screen. Now the fib of two is gonna be the fib of one plus the fib of zero. So how many times am I gonna see that fib debugging string uh, put on the screen? I should see it three times. Once for fib of two, once for fib of one, once for fib of zero. Print it out three times. And if I uh, just do one more example, just to show how many times uh, fib is being called. And again, it's being called recursively. Uh, the fib of six should be eight. Fib gets called a lot <laughs> to uh, uh, just calculate the Fibonacci of that, of that one number. Uh, and so that's an example of uh, recursive functions um, and, uh, and functions in general. They're a great way to simplify your program and make large problems uh, solvable by, by taking that problem and breaking it down into individual pieces, uh, making it easier to solve. So functions are a great way uh, to make functions easier to read or programs easier to read. Uh, but also to make them uh, simpler. So that's it for uh, this week on functions. Uh, before I exit, I just wanted to uh, uh, thank the Patreon supporters, uh, everyone who supports me on Patreon, no matter what you give, I really do make this channel happen. I really definitely appreciate everyone. Uh, some of you have contributed at a higher level and I wanted to thank you here. So thank you very much. Uh, visit our website at freedos.org. Uh, join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. And in addition, since this is the uh, Writing Free Dash Programs in C, don't forget you can also visit the, uh, the website to see uh, the programming guide. Thank you.